Uh, Hello. Wait. Before we move to example three, the last when uh, the last part when you are talking about the, you use one which was the, uh, so I can have me. You can have to get you. Uh, what is this? You are choose it. The initial one out. The one we fed out. Why didn't you use the initial one? The initial question. So the question was too initial, even at that point. Because nothing was changed. So if you have negative two plus X All right. to the power negative one, they ask for, for the validity. You cannot say the modulus of X is less than negative two. That's not true. The modulus is never less than a negative number. So what we do is in each initial state, we just make sure that we reserve the first position for one so that this guy here can be like that. When the power is still outside, we are still having it in its initial state. And then we are now able to find the validity of the expansion. Oh, so negative okay. two will go out as a constant. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, another example. Sir. Hello? Sir, when finding the range of validity, is it always that you say less than one? If your first position is one, you say less than one. If it's four? Because when it is four, you have to force it to be one, so you can still say less than one. So you are, you are telling me that it's always have, it has to be less than one. If you have managed, if you've managed to force the first position to be one, yes. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm saying that so you are telling me that it's always supposed to be less than one. I have to force the first position to be one always. Yes. What if I don't know how to force it? Is there another way how I can do it? Because <laughs> the issue of failed it. Okay, so the forcing is mandatory if the first number is negative. But if the first number is positive, you just say this the second part is less than the first part. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So we have this guy here to the power less than half, expand up to and including the term in X3. Solution, you say three, one, plus two over three X to the power negative half, which is the same as three power negative half, one plus two over three X to the power negative half. But this can be written as one over root three, if you so wish, one plus two over three X. So the expansion keeps this guy outside and the power is this two negative half there. So we'll have one plus N, which is negative half 
the B part is two over three X plus N negative half, negative half minus one over two. B part is two over three X squared plus negative half, negative half minus one, negative half minus two over three factorial, which is three by two. The B part is two over three X or three. You close there. So if your memory is not that good, you must do something to it so that it is able to keep this one plus N AX plus N, N minus one over two AX squared plus N, N minus one, N minus two over three factorial AX power three. This is the equation we are using to substitute all these numbers we are substituting here. We just identify the AX part and the N and then substitute throughout. So you know so many four numbers, if you delete one from the head, it can get this, that space cannot be divided by this expansion. Or you forget some birthday. So you have one over root three, open. Then you have one, the first one will give us minus one over three X plus we have negative half, negative half minus, uh, minus one is negative three over two. Two over three squared is four over nine. X squared, we have over two. Plus negative half, negative half minus one is negative three over two, which is then negative five over two over six, but it's okay, we can keep it in this form. And then eight over 27, X bar three, keep going like that. Then you say, Three can go in three. Two can go in eight, four times. Two by two is four, which can take away that four. Two can go in four twice. So this two and that two go. Three once three in nine, three. Then we now we come down and write what has remained. Root three, one minus one over three X, negative half multiplied by negative one, multiplied by one over three. That is going to be positive one over six X squared. And then negative, 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 we'll have negative five over two times 27, that is 54 X power three. The expansion ends here.
Then they say, okay. So I have a question. Sorry, sir. Where did you okay. find the 50? Sorry, sir. The, the penalty multiplied with three. Where did you get the three again? Where did you get the three the that has? So I've said. Uh -huh. Two by 27. Two by 27. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's a number I'm looking for. Where do you get it? The two from here. Oh, okay. I've seen it. All right, thank you. So, so you mean that if you don't factorize the three, it means that there is how they'll consider the answer or it is just one and the same, even that one is very correct. It's one and the same, except that, you know, look, this number, if you don't factor this number out, what you'll be dealing with is three plus two X to the power negative half. We are saying, if you expand this, you have three to the power negative one over two as your first term, plus three to the power negative one over two minus one multiplied by two X plus uh, in fact, as you are doing that, no, sir, I'm not getting this what you're end. writing down. <laughs> okay, up, stop. If you don't factor out the three, you are going to have this thing under right here, which is complicated. But your answer, in whichever form it will look like, will be correct. Except that for you to call it the answer, even you yourself, you won't be happy with what you with what you'll be seeing. How come root three? When the power is half, it's the same as root. So if I answered the question of if we don't factor out the three. Yes, but I'm still confused. So I wanted to deliberately attempt to answer it without factoring out the three. And you said that's thing I can't get. I wasn't understanding because we are doing the power, which is negative one over two minus one, not the same three. Uh, I don't know. Not no, the, the three is not the power, is it? Yes. Uh -huh. So it cannot go in the position of the power. Remember, the expansion we are dealing with is a plus b to the power n, where in the expansion, each of them has a place to occupy. A n minus one b n, n minus one over two, a, n minus two, b two, n, n minus one, n minus two, over three factorial, a, n minus three, b three. Okay? Oh, this is when I've seen it, okay, okay, mm. thank you. So if you don't factor out the three, you have work because your a won't be one it will be three. So you must know what three to the power negative half is. In each position, you must know what a to that power is. So it will be three to the negative powers. Okay. So that's the reason why we have said, this expansion is not nice as compared to this one. If I have something like this, my life is uh, not complicated in this case because I'm just doing this. My eyes are on the B part and the power. This thing. So it becomes, you're, you're not even worried about the first part because it's just one. I don't need, I don't need to know the power of one. 
whatever power it is, I'll still get one. If I concentrate on the B part. That's okay, the beauty of you. doing that. Okay, so if we say it, so just before you go for the other course, physics, let me, how do we answer the range of validity question if it comes in this case? A range of validity. You would say the modulus of two X is less than three. What is another way of doing it if I can't force a one? This is another way. For as long as that three there is positive as it is, then you can say the modulus of two X is less than three. Take away two, divide it, divide it. So you'd get the modulus of X is less than three over two. Simplified. This is another way. Okay, let's join for physics. Have a good day.